11 easy ball control exercises, ball control drills. Notice I'm in a very small space. This roof, the ceiling is very low, but no excuses. I can still work my touch in a space like this, and I'll show you exactly how. Obviously, if you're outdoors, you can challenge your touch a little more, setting the ball up higher, but no excuses. You work with what you have, you make the most of it. So I'll show you 11 different exercises, give you a few ideas on how to perform each technique more efficiently, improve faster. So number one is this toe control. Okay, so I'm controlling the ball on the toe and I'm trying to cushion it. Almost think of like a footstall. You don't have to do it like that, but think of the idea of a footstall. When you're doing a footstall, your foot isn't going through the ball. Your foot is actually absorbing the ball into the ground. Okay, so do that with the toe. I'm, I'm almost bringing my leg backwards rather than putting my foot through the ball. I'm actually gonna bring my foot down towards the ground. I'm trying to reduce any bounce practicing with both feet, but I'm hitting, I'm not hitting here, I'm hitting on the toe of the boot and really absorbing it and almost bringing my leg backwards. So just with, with this rather than this, you're gonna have a lot more success already. Next would be a inside control. And when I'm practicing these, I'm just gonna practice that touch, let it settle and pop it up, go again. On the other side, let's give you a little cleaner contact. Okay, I'm trying to hit with the inside of the foot, not on the toe here, not on the heel. Nice cushion here. In order to do that, I need mobility. I need the mobility and the flexibility of the hips. A lot of players struggle. They can only open up their hip like this. But the more you practice this skill and really focus on flexing, really opening up, I want this to come uh, vertical or parallel to the ground. Horizontal is actually the proper direction. Okay, but I'd rather you turn it too much than not enough at all. Because if you if you don't turn it enough, touch is gonna go that way. This inside touch, I just want it to set right in the middle. Okay, so really focus on twisting, twisting that leg more and making contact right in the middle here, curling the toes upwards. Just cushion. Now, let me just say, when I'm doing all these drills, you'll notice when I do it in the demonstration, I want you to get away from one, two, three, four, five, six, pop, and then perform the skill. You're trying to settle the ball as quickly as possible. You're trying to get it back up in the air as quickly as possible. Okay, so obviously you still need to perform the technique so if you're rushing yourself and you're not allowed and you're not allowing yourself to perform the drill properly, then slow it down a bit. But if you're confident, you want to improve, you want to push yourself, as soon as that ball's settled, boom, pop it up. And let's go again. Popping up different techniques, different parts of the foot. Okay, so we'll get into those. But just keep that idea in mind, trying to settle the ball as quickly as possible, pop it back up as quickly as possible, perform the next skill. Lace untied. Let's keep it natural, keep talking. I'm gonna go outside touch now. So similar to, similar to that inside touch, I need the mobility here. Outside touch, I need that mobility there. Just play with that. You might be stuck in this range of motion right here. Really try to flex it. And even like, I might do something like this in a warm up. But realistically, those are the same touches, same movements, okay? So if you wanna perform that skill properly, you have to have the ability to twist the foot and it's it's the tightness and the hips and the groins in here. Okay, so again, just like you were trying to hit the middle, not this side, not the toe, a lot of players will struggle with the proper contact point. So they're either hitting it here or they're hitting it here and it's bouncing off. You're trying to hit right in here, make that flush, make that flat. And the point of contact, you wanna meet it here, not here, not here. I'm gonna meet it here and just settle that ball play as quickly as possible. Especially on your weaker side. This one took me a while when I was younger. It took me a while to get that on the weaker side. It feels really awkward, but the more you play with it, 
the more you compare your right to your left, you're going to figure out that weaker side. Flush contact, play quickly. Next, I'm going on the body, I'm going to go with a thigh contact. So similar to the toe control, remember absorbing the ball. A lot of players, when they come to do their thigh, for some reason, they're going through it again. Bring it down, absorb the ball. Okay, I want to get the ball on the ground as quickly as possible so I can play, unless I'm trying to set myself to play in the air. Okay, but for these, I'm trying to absorb as quickly as possible and then play. Think about the contact point. I want to hit on the thigh. It's called a thigh control, not a knee control. A thigh control. Okay, obviously sometimes it might come off the knee, and if it is off the knee, it has to be even more delicate because that's more bone, it's a harder surface. It's going to produce a bigger force if I'm going through it. And even if I'm coming down, I've really got to absorb it. Chest. So with the chest control, for me, a lot of players, first of all, are scared of the ball. So when it's time to chest, it's, it's not an actual chest. They're not actually chesting it. They're kind of half. They're not showing their whole chest. I want you to open up. Open up and show yourself to the ball. Open up rather than scared or making a smaller surface. Open this up. And then the other thing is the arch, the lean back. Okay, if I really want to cushion that there, I have to lean back. But I again, absorbing. I'm not going, unless I'm trying to run with the ball, I'm not going through it. If it comes at me with more pace or a lot of height, I have to absorb it. So just think about opening up more, leaning back more. And having a better touch than that. Next I was doing a head control. Again, very small space. So when you're practicing this small space, it's actually good because you're working on that delicate touch. I can only hit it so far. If I hit it too hard, I'm hitting the ceiling here. So I'm trying to get the right weight of touch, but different techniques. And here I'm just thinking of wherever it comes, just dealing with it. So sometimes it might be more direct. Sometimes it might be coming from a little higher, but it's just a little touch. I'm not powering through it. Again, I'm absorbing. I'm absorbing all these touches. Just getting on the ground, play as quickly as possible. Next, I went into uh, more ground control. So on the half volley, as soon as the ball, as soon as the ball bounces, then I'm going to get on top of it with these different techniques. So a lot of players, when they're first starting, they can't get the timing right, and the ball's bouncing too much, and they're trying to get down. If that happens, sometimes it's awkward. Sometimes you have to make it work, but you're trying to get the perfect timing. So as the ball hits the ground. Boom, I'm on top of it, and I'm putting it back into the ground. It's like a half volley. Full volley, you're striking the ball out of the air. Half volley, you're striking it right after the bounce. Think about that, right after the bounce, I'm getting on the ball. So the first one I actually did was a sole. And I wouldn't do that too many times in a match. You see Marcelo, Marcelo does that sometimes, like 50 yard ping across the pitch, and he's just, just casual, and then go and play. But it's a good skill to practice ball mastery. And if you're comfortable with it, use it in the match if it works for you. So again, perfect timing. I'm watching the ball. When I get really good, I can go no look, but I guess I can't even. But I want you to actually watch the ball with your eyes. I always say this and it seems so, so self-explanatory and so obvious, but so many players, whenever you're performing technique, I'm not actually watching the ball. For example, if I was about to shoot, before I even make contact, my head is already up. I'm already looking at the goal before I even struck the ball. Or I'm playing a pass, and before I make contact on the, per on the exact spot on the ball that I want to hit, I'm already looking up at my target, or I'm already looking or worried about a defender trying to come and tackle me. Okay? So when you're performing the skill, I want to see the focus and the effort, actually watch the ball until it meets the ground. The next ground control, it was an inside touch. So 
So right after that half volley, inside touch, and really focus on the movement. Technique is important, it's how you move with the ball, it's how you move your body. Be more athletic, be more on the toes, less on the heels. But I'm really, I'm getting that touch with the inside of the foot. Touching with the inside of the foot, getting over the ball. I'm bringing my hips over the ball. What I mean by that is, I'm turning my hips over the ball as opposed to just putting my foot out there and then moving. I'm trying to move. I'm trying to move with my first touch. And if I want an even bigger change of direction, I'm turning my hips over even more. Same with the outside of the foot. Okay, you can see I'm, again, I'm watching, I'm focused, perfect timing, body over the ball. You don't want to be back here if you don't have to. I always want to be over the ball. Because even if I have a bad touch, I can still get to the ball quickly. But this one, even more so, I'm focused on my, my hip movement. My hips are rounded and I'm traveling with my first touch. I'm going somewhere with my first touch. Croy, same. This one is trickier, but it's the same principles, timing of it, and just getting on top of the ball. It's like a little hop, it's like a little jump. Because I'm actually, I'm focusing on getting my planting leg out of the way. Because if I don't, I'm just gonna hit it into myself. So a little drop will help me get that planting leg out of the way. But just like a Cruyff turn, for me, a lot of players, when they do a Cruyff, they're actually doing a chop rather than really curling the toes and dragging the ball behind them on that line. So when, you, when you're doing this Cruyff in the air, I really want you to curl, curl those toes. It's not here. You're gonna chop you here. I want that foot turned here. Almost go too much the wrong way and you'll probably end up going centered. Okay, but just practice. And it's all about the timing, getting it right on top of that bounce. The last one I did was just the air control. So just don't let the ball hit the ground. Here you can have a little juggle, but still just go one, two, hop. One, two, hop. And I was using all different techniques, all the ones that we practiced. Okay, just gonna drop the ball. But a few little touches, pop it up, control that ball. 11 ball control exercises or ball control drills that you can do by, your by yourself in a small space at home. Obviously, if you're outside, like I said, test yourself with that touch, go a little higher, that'll make it more challenging. Play with the speed of your movement. Don't put the ball on the ground, pop it up, and let yourself get set. Play more realistic. Settle that ball as quickly as possible, pop it up as quick as you can.